That woman's titties can be seen from throughout the universe. <laughs> All right, guys, this is Ben One with Andrew. I'm ready for the deep dive, everybody. Every, yeah, everyone knows <laughs> that I love doing this part more. Yes. Talking about movies is better than watching movies. <laughs> so, as I told you guys, the Batman and Robin script was kind of always Akiva Goldsman's thing. There wasn't really a lot that was, like, written. I wish that there was, like, some... Uh, or I had a copy of some, like cool version of Batman and Robin that was never made, but that just didn't happen. So we were probably wondering, what's this deep dive about? Well, it's about what could have been the sequel to Batman and Robin. Yes, they were thinking of doing a sequel to this movie while this movie was in production. Right. And just to give you a little ba- bit of background, this got me into looking up internet news about comic book movies. And pre-internet day, not pre-internet, but like but like AOL days you were looking at AOL, yeah, like when you first got dial-up internet, I would go up dial-up internet and I would look up just various upcoming movies because I was just fascinated, like, what can I look up? And I just thought, like, what are some upcoming movies that I'd be interested in? And then, this is this day, like, changed my, like, fandom life. I typed in the words, Batman 5. <laughs> I, w- I-, I imagine little Ben yeah. <laughs> in front of a fucking Dell computer. It was a Mac, actually. A uh, <laughs> Mac, okay. It was an iMac. <laughs> AOL days, and you're like, whoa. Okay. And then there were all these fan sites, and I clicked on it. I don't remember the original one. It was probably on, like, GeoCities or something. Oh, and the, yeah. This, yeah. this MIDI version of the Elfman. Angel Fire. Yeah, Angel Fire. <laughs> this MIDI version of the Danny Elfman theme starts playing. And I'm like, what the hell? Was there a counter of how many people had visited that page? Probably, yeah. Remember that shit? <laughs> and it was all about, here are news on Batman 5. All the fans want a darker Batman movie. They want a sequel, but we want a darker Batman movie. Batman and Robin was shit. And I was like, wow, people hated Batman and Robin. Jesus. Like in 99 or whatever the fuck, people were saying that on AOL? Yeah, yeah, yeah. People were saying that. Wow. Uh, there were already Photoshop posters. This is my first exposure to fan art. Photoshop cool. posters of Clooney in the same... He was in the same Batman and Robin suit, but everybody had Photoshopped it so that it was uh, the same shade of black as like the Keaton uh, suit. And of course, they erased the nipples. Of course, yeah. Uh, and they, everybody was talking about how the title could be Batman The Dark Knight or Batman Triumphant or something along those lines. Okay. Uh, and uh, they, everybody was saying that rumors had it that the villains were going to be Harley Quinn, which I'm like, that's kind of weird because Joker's dead, and the Scarecrow. This is early internet fanboy bullshit, though, I feel like. There's no way. What was this based on? Uh, what was it based out- on, Ben? <laughs> Well, what was it based on? I it took me many years to find out what was the actual plans for what was going on. Okay, it turns out there's some element of truth of it. So at the time of Batman and Robin, Schumacher was meeting with a writer named Mark Protosevich, who wrote The Cell, that movie with Jennifer Lopez and Vincent D'Onofrio. Yeah, I, uh, I saw that. And uh, he was working on a 150 page draft of a movie called Batman Unchained. That was the actual title of it. Uh, it was the script. Man, before you get into it, yeah, I gotta tell you, like I, I actually knew I had seen some flashes of the Batman Forever stuff that blew my mind. Yeah, I was aware of some of that. This stuff, I don't know fucking <laughs> shit about what we're about to go over. I don't know a goddamn thing. All right. So this is going to be interesting for sure. It's going to blow your mind. Then. I'm sure. I'm sure that a lot of listeners are sim- in my position. I think. right. Uh, cause I remember reading and people had their Photoshop posters and common things like it's going to be Scarecrow and everybody's favorite choice for that, which felt really weird to me. Everybody's favorite choice for Scarecrow was Jeff Goldblum. And I was like, <laughs> as the Scarecrow after Arnold, I, I don't know, but Just okay. some guy that's kind of lanky. I guess he is lanky. <laughs> um, and then they were saying Madonna for Harley Quinn. It was a weird choice. Terrible. But I'm just like, All okay, terrible. all right, we'll see what happens. So here was here's what it actually was. It was a script called Batman Unchained. It was being written during the time of Batman and Robin, and Schumacher already kind of wanted to go in a darker direction. That would have been very crazy to it see said, Schumacher do that. Yeah, the script dealt with Batman learning to conquer fear and to confront the demons of his past. A Hollywood Reporter article. 
Okay. So it did have a brilliant yet satanic version of Professor Jonathan Crane. Satanic? They said, they said satanic. I think they mean in terms of just like he's just really evil. Okay. So Scarecrow was going to be it, and just like uh, just like with Batman Forever, uh, Crane would have a personal vendetta against Bruce Wayne, and the other villain, Harley Quinn, had a vendetta against Batman. Harley okay. was a toy maker who was described as sadistic in a mis- mischievous fun sense and learns that her true father was Jack Napier. So they've changed Harley entirely. Harley is now the Joker's daughter. So she's kind of combined with the Joker's daughter character in the comics uh, and uh, sets on her own path of vengeance against Batman for taking for killing him, basically, in the, in the 89 movie. Right, right, right. Uh, so this would have tied back way back to the 89 film. Meanwhile, Crane learns that Bruce Wayne is Batman, and he teams up with Harley to drive him insane and eventually throw him into Arkham Asylum. Okay. So that's kind of like the animated series episode. I think it was called In Darkness Dwells, where Batman is in Arkham Asylum uh, because of I'm Scarecrow's not, imagination. I've seen that back in the day, but yeah. I forgot. I rewatched uh, Mad Love like a year or two ago. Right. And that holds up like crazy. Um, I guess most of that show does. But anyway, yeah. So here's the craziest thing, and this is what got me most excited about it, because there were rumors about this on it, but it was confirmed that this was actually in the script. They drive Batman insane with fear gas. So Batman's hallucinating, and who does he see in the fear gas? He sees the Penguin, Catwoman, Two-Face, Riddler, and the Joker. Okay. They were going to bring back DeVito, Pfeiffer, Tommy Lee Jones, Jim Carrey, but most of all, Jack Nicholson was going to come back as the Joker. Did he actually say cameo. he was? They wanted to bring him back. Okay. I don't know if they ever really talked they about it. They never got that far. They never really. got that far. I think they sometimes they interviewed him. I remember reading an interview of Jack Nicholson saying that he hadn't heard anything, but he would love to come back. He Apparently, he loved that role. He Yeah, he loved yeah. it, so he would have been down for it. Yeah. So, Mark Potosevich, <clears throat> the scriptwriter, said Joel wanted to tie up all the films, the Tim Burton films, and his films were building up to this moment. Uh, the standout character would have been Harley Quinn, who ends the movie finding redemption. Um, she was said to be complex, conflicted, ultimately a good person underneath. Uh, while the casting process never got off the ground, Protosevich's agents at CAA set him up for lunch with Courtney Love, <laughs> who was also rep by the agency. Honestly, I could was see interested that. in getting an acting crew going. I mean, not that it's she's the best for the role, but I'm saying I could totally see them trying that. In 1999, not, 99, eight or nine, nine, yeah. Whenever this was, yeah. yeah. Uh, By the way, just real quick, yeah. you probably already explained this, but just to reconfirm, this yeah. was a full script. This was a full script that has yet to be leaked, so I'm, I've am i been waiting over 20 years to get a hold of the script because this is what all those rumors were about. What's this guy's name again? Let's Mark, fucking... Mark Protosevich. Does he have a Twitter? Maybe uh, we got to talk to this guy. Uh, he t- <laughs> I'm I'm just reading off of an article that he where he talked to Hollywood Reporter about okay. it. Okay, all right. Uh, let's see. So he talks about he received. Um, let's see. So he talked about it. Uh, Schumacher was trying to I guess hunt down who he was going to cast and everything. Presumably Clooney was going to come back. O'Donnell was going to come back. It's unknown. I don't know whether or not Barbara Wilson, Batgirl, was in the script. I imagine she would have otherwise, because this was being written during Batman and Robin time. So, like, why right. would you put her, set her up in Batman and Robin only to not use her? Again, uh, uh, apparently, uh, you know, in Batman and Robin, Coolio plays that dude in the motorcycle thing? Yeah. Coolio said that uh, he was being talked to. He said, the only reason I did that part in Batman and Robin was because they promised me the villain part in the following Batman. We'll see the scarecrow. Like, what the fuck would he play? I, I, I don't know. He says, which they didn't they didn't do because they fired Joel Schumacher. Me and him didn't get along with that great anyway. The bat, the next Batman villain was supposed to be the scarecrow. So I guess, I think, here's what I think happened. I think Warner Brothers, for whatever reason, tried to entice him to be in the movie and be like, hey, maybe we'll give you a villain role in the next one. He, he could and, have been so much bullshit thrown at him, like so much Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't think they were actually going for him for Scarecrow because the actor that Schumacher is on record for saying he wanted to go after for, for Scarecrow was Nicolas Cage. <laughs> well, look, Nicolas Cage, I can for these younger millennials, yeah. Nicolas Cage was like semi-serious at this time. Mm-hmm. Like he did Con Air and Face Off. He like, was also... He was A-list as fuck in the 90s. He had just... I don't, I don't know where this project was at during the 90s, during this particular moment, but he was being courted for Superman Lives. And oh, I don't yeah, think that was working yeah, out. So yeah. maybe it's just like, okay, you want a different comic book role? We got the Scarecrow. 
I mean, I honestly like his body type and shit. It's not. I mean, as a '90s Batman, it's not the worst thing you could think of. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It it, it does make a lot of sense. So he says, "I remember going to the set of Face Off and asking Nick Cage to play the Scarecrow. The studio, and I'm sure the audience, was in the frame of mind to go too dark with Batman at the time. The studio wasn't sure about going too dark with Batman at that moment. They really wanted to keep going with this Batman and Robin type thing. Cut to Nolan fucking <laughs> yeah, knocking it out of the park. Anyway, keep going. It says during the movie, a rift forms between Batman and Robin, who comes back during the final battle to help his mentor. Uh, so they would have been separated at some point, obviously because of the fact that Batman was going to be in Arkham Asylum for some part of it." After defeating his demons, Bruce travels to Bali, where Protozovich read in that real-life monks enter a cave full of bats to show that they have conquered fear. So in the script, Bruce enters the cave as bats swarm around him. Credits roll. That's Perfect. apparently how it how it ends. So again, this image of Bruce facing his fear by going into the bat cave and being swarmed by bats. We saw that in Tom Mankiewicz draft in 1983. We saw it in the cut Red Book subplot in Batman Forever. And this comes up yet again in the Batman Unchained script by Mark Protosevich for the unmade Batman and Robin sequel. It didn't really make it until Batman Begins finally brought it to life, but this idea has been traced back all the way through all these things that we've done a deep dive It's just in. a cool visual because it's like like he's baptized by right. bats. You know what I exactly. mean? Exactly. Like it's, it, it, baptism means a new birth, a new life. You know what I mean? I yeah. don't know. You know it's, no, it's, just a, it's, right. it's those fucking you know, themes. So it says, Protosevich was finishing up his first draft when Batman and Robin hit theaters in June 1997. The backlash against the movie was immediate. Shortly after, Protosevich received a call from Schumacher who asked to see his script, which was still an unpolished first draft. Schumacher shared it with Warner Brothers executive Tom Lassily, among only a handful of people on the planet who have ever read the script. Um, which is Protosevich basically saying, like, this has not really been leaked out, only a few people have read it, type of thing. But presumably, <clears throat> with Batman and Robin... Given the backlash, WB didn't want to keep going. With yeah, Schumacher, yeah, they didn't yeah. want to go Huge in that direction. Huge backlash at the time, man. Yeah. Um, Schumacher, I think, given the backlash, probably didn't want to keep going either. Yeah. With yeah. that. Because uh, these movies, they're huge and they take up a lot. Yeah. So. Uh, it's Warner Brothers' top property, man. Yeah. Yeah. So Schumacher was out, but they still like the idea of doing another Batman movie. Uh, yeah, of course. Got to keep, keep this fucking Obviously. money train going, man. So at that point. Uh, Enter two other screenwriters named Lee Shapiro and Stephen Wise, and okay. uh, they get in contact with another uh, Warner Brothers executive and want to pitch their version of a Batman sequel that would sort of bring it back to similar thing to what Batman Unchained was going to do, uh, okay. bring it back to roots. They had a different take on it, but the the, the name of this project wasn't Batman Unchained. It was called Unchained. It was called Batman Dark Knight. Okay, and that's Dark Knight as one word and one K. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I see it on the page here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I have the script one in front K. of me. Yeah, there's 1K. And uh, that kind of was inspired by a... Uh, it was inspired by an old uh, movie that they liked. Let me see if I can well, find Well, let, let me here. check in here real quick. Yeah. Maybe listeners or some of the listeners are thinking the same thing. So this has very little to do with that as of yet unseen by the public uh, script. Right. This is a completely different draft. Completely different. Yeah. Now, okay. this, is, this is one that I have read that we can do a deep dive in. Okay. Copy that. All right. But I can't do a deep dive into the other one. I can only go into the reports because I've never read it. There's no other details as far as you know uh, for the for that for that one, Protosevich uh, no, or whatever? No, unfortunately. I wish I could find more. It is, it is a script I've been dying to read ever since I first typed in Batman 5 into... God, what was it? Netscape Navigator or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. In the yeah. 90s. So... so Okay, yeah, I'm very interested in that. I'm interested in it too. Like, why would awesome. it be called Unchained? You know, like I don't know. It's just, you well, want, maybe because he breaks out? out of Arkham, you know, and he oh, faces yeah. his demons and stuff. I just wanted to see. Honestly, the biggest thing I wanted to see was a Return to a Dark Batman, and to see Batman see Jack Napier. I wanted to see Joker right, return and the hallucinations right. and uh, and how those scenes would play out. It would have been a cool scene, yeah, for sure. Yeah, of course, and like that would wind up on. YouTube wasn't around at the time, but I can only imagine like everybody would want, to, would want to keep rewatching Jack Nicholson scenes over and over and over again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Batman Dark Knight script was written, and uh, it wasn't really released until recently uh, as a paperback that you can buy on Amazon. Yep. Uh, and I've got it in front of me right here, and we're going to dive right into what happens in this. So we start with, uh, this is going to be Gotham set during Halloween. Okay, good. Again, this is going to be a Batman and Robin sequel, so this is another different take on it. Uh, an alternative sequel to Batman Unchained. 
So it's Gotham on Halloween, and we go to Gotham State University where a, uh, a doctor named Kirk Langstrom is in, and he's working on an experiment. Um, he meets up with his wife, Francine, and uh, it's clear from how he interacts with her that, A, he's a workaholic. Okay. Uh, he barely has time for her and time for, to mend their relationship uh, and everything. And uh, the other thing is that he's going deaf. Okay. He can't hear anything. And um, he uh, he kind of says how important it is and, and tells her about how, like, this can help save so many people and change so many lives and everything. And she kind of just wishes that he was the uh, – that he spent as much time with her. So it's kind of like on the men's, this okay. marriage between the two of them. Uh, but he ends up working late that night, and then – he starts hearing uh, this voice talk to him. There's another person in the room uh, calling him guilty of nepotism because Francine is on the board over the university and okay. everything. And uh, Kirk calls him Jonathan, but Jonathan says, address me as Dr. Crane. Okay. Uh, and Crane said, and Crane talks to him about, uh, you know, you're a man of science, think rationally, the Board of Regents. Oh, wait, sorry, that's Kirk's line. Uh, tells him the Board of Regents have always been impartial. You know, it's, there's no favoritism here because because Francine's around. Um, but uh, Jonathan thinks that uh, Jonathan's sort of playing around with him until he pops out and uh, says, boo. And we finally get to see <laughs> Jonathan Crane uh, in his full glory, described as 40s, hollow complexion, a ponytail of must, stringing hair, and everything. And it's clear that there's... Very Jeff Goldblum-like. <laughs> 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 Potentially. I had somebody different in mind when I was... <laughs> was reading it but he says you know happy halloween uh and kirk says sometimes i think you're just as insane as your patients at arkham okay yeah for sure so that's a a standard line i think in the situation it is yeah so uh shapiro and wise have come up with the idea that jonathan crane is a doctor at arkham asylum which was not anything in anything in the comics yeah yeah and was going to be something that ended up in batman begins you're going to find there's that one line from fucking um falcone or something one of those guys like you gotta Nut job running the yeah, nut house yeah, or something exactly. like that. Yeah, there so is that line. There's a similar thing. Um, so Jonathan says to him, and I shit you not since you just mentioned that scene. He says, have I ever shown you my work, doctor? <laughs> there you go. Yeah. yeah. Kirk says, no, and frankly, I'm not, as if to say, not interested. But Jonathan already stretches out his arm and the fear gas shoots mm, out yeah, at yeah, Kirk. Yeah. And uh, Jonathan says that he's, quote, unquote, swapping one rat for another. Uh, and Kirk is wondering what's happening to me, and he falls, and he gets he basically gets accidentally hit with a syringe that contains, or not with syringe, he, he the broken glass of the liquid that he was working with. It was for his experiment, and it gets into his blood. Okay. And he starts transforming as Jonathan Crane leaves, and he grows the, uh, the fangs and the claws, and he basically he turns into a giant bat. Awesome. So... This Batman Dark Knight was going to be Scarecrow and Man Bat as the villains. Oh shit! Okay, yeah. as you can see, and it was Jesus. Scarecrow creating Man Bat right off the bat. It seems like there's no been kind of a low, maybe not low key, but like there's like kind of a movement to get Man Bat really off the ground, like to get right. him in a fucking movie. Yeah, exactly. And this is the this is the first time that they attempted that. Can, can I ask you a question about this real quick? Sure. I've never read a Man Bat comic. Mm-hmm. Are they that good? Like, why? Do they, why is there? It it's, feels like there's other villains they could do. You it's know? classic Incredible Hulk type stuff, where it's okay. like you know the monster's not really you. Can you control it? That type of thing. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the tragedy of it. He's just a man. He's not really a monster. That 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 type of drama and that dilemma. And they play a lot with that in this one. So you could almost say they could play on like themes of prejudice or something. And Batman's very prejudiced prejudice mm-hmm. against <clears throat> against villains at times. <laughs> Somewhat, yeah, yeah, and the idea of, like, Batman is a human pretending to be a bat. Yeah. And uh, Man Bat is a bat who is trying to get back to being a human. So thematically it works, of course, and also, obviously, a horror element. That could yeah, be, that the could horror be cool. element of it. Yeah, so. Scarecrow and Man Bat, very horror. Yeah, I so got this you. Is, yeah. And this is set during Halloween, so this would have been, like, I can't see Schumacher directing this, or if he was directing it, where we need, like, Lost Boys-type Schumacher of, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. very dark. There's a lot of horror elements to this movie uh to it the sounds script. really cool so yeah. far and yeah only for sure. eight pages in <laughs> this is somebody that yeah halloween and the whole horror thing yeah it's fucking it's good it's good shit mm-hmm. 
Uh, so we then, obviously, Kirk turns to the man bat. Francine finds that he's missing. And so she believes something happened to her husband, but she doesn't know exactly what because who would ever think that that would happen to somebody? Right. So we go back to Wayne Manor, and Alfred uh, is fighting Bruce, who's sort of brooding in his bedroom. And he asks, anxious to fly again? And Bruce says, flying's for animals, not men. <laughs> and Alfred says, I'm a man, not a monster. Is that it, sir? As I seem to recall, you're a little bit of both. So already right off the bat, talking to what we just talked about with the uh, thematics when it comes right, to man bat. Right, 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 right. Uh, he says, we all make our choices, Alfred, and I alone must deal with these consequences. Alfred says, you are correct, except for one thing. You are not alone, not yet anyway. So this is a Bruce Wayne who, after Batman and Robin... Uh, some time has passed. Robin is no longer fighting with him, and Bruce is no longer Batman. No shit. Okay. Yeah. So I what feel like we're gonna that? get some bombs coming, yeah. <laughs> coming soon. Some yeah. bat, bat bombs are coming. <laughs> uh, we go to Kirk's lab, and Francine is basically reporting him missing to Commissioner Gordon, trying to figure out um, what's been going on about that. Some people are saying that Batman was last seen there because everyone saw a giant like bat like thing. Yeah, that's great. Thinking, did Love Batman it. did Batman kidnap kidnap Kirk Langstrom? And Gordon is like, there is no more Batman. Okay. So that establishes, you know, that Batman hasn't been seen in a long time, but people are suspecting maybe he is back because they see Man Bat around. Okay. Uh, we go to a classroom auditorium and Jonathan Crane is talking about fear and everything. Of course, what else would he be fucking talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Into a whole class. It's classroom. almost as if it's its whole th- his whole thing. Uh <laughs> So Jonathan talks about fear and how, like, he says there are some for whom fear is addictive and stimula- as addictive and stimulating as sex. And one of his students, smartass, says, yeah, those who can't get any. And Jonathan's like, Mr. Grayson, do you have anything to say? Oh, my God. <laughs> is kind of the attitude that he has. So Dick Grayson is Jonathan Crane's student at the university. Okay. All right. And, uh, a, lot of, a lot of connections here. He finally took Bruce's advice about going back to school. <laughs> yeah. So... Uh, at this point, 50-year-old Chris O'Donnell is playing a college <laughs> student. 50-year-old, <laughs> yes, for sure. <laughs> uh, it says Somehow they, older than Alfred, <laughs> Chris O'Donnell. That's just so many hair. Um, <laughs> I want to see old man Grayson now, dude. Like old man Logan. <laughs> we might see it when Burt Ward shows up in Crisis on Infinite Oh, that's true, uh, man. Anyway, I, I kind of paraphrased. That wasn't the actual line. I just That was just my way to yeah. introduce the fact that Dick Grayson is there. But... Um, Jonathan and Dick Grayson kind of have a uh, argument in front of everybody in the class because Dick Grayson just thinks he's a lunatic, and Jonathan doesn't like to be embarrassed in front of other people. And we're okay. going to dig into why. It's not just like That's a cool. common slight thing. That's cool. Uh, but uh, the auditorium empties, and uh, as Dick Grayson leaves, he thinks to himself, "Perhaps I have my first volunteer." Okay. Oh, so, nice. Yeah, it's good. I mean? Good shit. Good shit. Um, Dick's walking around, and every, the university is getting prepared for Halloween. And uh, you know, of course, there's decorations, and one of those decorations is a scarecrow. Okay. As he's yeah, walking good. around, and uh, the, there's a newspaper that says, "Mysterious disappearance is the Batman responsible? A possible link between the missing Doctor Kirk Langstrom and the Cape Crusaders' return." And of course, Dick finds this, and he feels disturbed because he's just like, "I thought Batman, that Bruce retired as Batman. So what the hell does this mean?" Meanwhile, a bunch of professors are talking about crazy Dr. Crane and how, you know, again, he's, they call him old Ichabod's names are, old Ichabod's days are numbered, I'm afraid. And okay. they hear behind him, Dr. Crane is there, and he's reacting really strangely to that, almost like he feels very insulted by that comment, and he starts hearing voices in his head of boys calling him Ichabod and okay. bullying him. And so he gets a lot of, this version of Crane has a lot of flashbacks to childhood of when he was uh, bullied for his appearance. This is this is basically directly from the comics. Okay, good, yeah. Uh, on everything. Uh, being called Ichabod for his lanky frame and everything, calling him a scaredy cat. And um, he uh, he storms out and he goes directly to the dean, whose name is Hollowell. And Hollowell kind of acts as his mentor and uh, and shrink. And Jonathan's like, I need your help again. And uh, Hollowell's like, okay, lie down and we'll talk about it. And, and I'll help you out. He's trying to help Jonathan through his traumas so that he can stay there. This the is university. like another teacher, another professor? Yeah, there's another, yeah, there's a dean okay. who's supposed to be his friend. Oh, yeah, yeah, I yeah, gotcha, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, Man Bat keeps going around Gotham, and uh, up above, Jonathan Crane visits Francine, uh, gives her sort of a house call. Okay. 
Uh, and he's like, this isn't a so social call. Why have I been summoned to present classified records of my experiments to the board? Because he's freaking out about it. And Francine says, well, frankly, you know, we're following procedures. We're entitled to know everything about our, our faculty's experiments. And your grant application left too many things unanswered. So Jonathan feels like they're closing in. And Francine's like, is thinking that this guy's kind of a lunatic okay. uh, in terms of what are his experiments on people. Okay. Uh, and he, he ends up, when he leaves, he gets a flashback of a bunch of kids chasing after him um, and this voice in his head from an adult saying, you know what you must do. And it's the voice of his father. Oh, shit. So it, it's, there's a lot here with, with uh, Jonathan Crane in this. Way it's more than Batman Begins. actually more than Batman Begins, yeah. Way more than Batman Begins. Yeah. This, this version of Scarecrow would have been way more true to He's the comic. He's a little bit... One not one dimensional, one point five dimensions maybe. <laughs> and Batman right. begins, you know. And just in the overall trilogy, he's kind of just like the side villain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dick shows up to. Uh, well, he. I mean, he doesn't show up. He calls Wayne Manor. He calls Alfred, and he is bringing up. You know, have you been following the news? What the hell's been going on? When do we suit up and investigate the exper the disappearance of Langstrom? And Alfred says, "I'm afraid I don't have the answer." to that would you care to speak to the one who does and dick says uh eh, just the same but i know where the conversation is going to lead so dick doesn't even want to talk to bruce right now okay uh bruce goes to his office and a bunch of executives uh are talking to him and um he's kind of bruce is sort of thinking back to he's distracted during this meeting because he's thinking back to the last time he and dick saw each other as batman and robin and uh, it was when Robin nearly killed one of the criminals. He says, Batman says, you okay. could have killed him. Robin says, at least I was here. Because uh, he felt that uh, Batman's been losing his touch because Batman's getting old. Robin is feeling the pain of having left Bane to die. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's unfortunately not covered. There's, there, there's like no reference to Batman or Robin in this whole script. Okay. Batgirl's not even in this. Okay, yeah, I gotcha. Um, Reboot. Yeah. But there's it basically shows the ongoing distrust between Batman and Robin. So apparently Batman didn't learn shit from Batman and Robin about the whole like <laughs> I should trust you more and things like that. Uh, but the criminal, yeah, the criminal accuses Robin of like you're nothing about your partner and, and everything. So this kind of it kind of backtracks on the arc in Batman and Robin. Frankly, people would have been so it. tired of that, man. Yeah, it's, especially if it was like two years later. Yeah, like oh my god, it's like the same fucking arc. Uh -huh. That's the problem with rebooting it every fucking time. Yeah, so. We go to the university clock tower, and a bunch of guys are there to repair it. And, of course, guess who's hanging out in the clock tower is a giant bat with man bat. So we, we keep threading man bat's presence throughout. Um, That's pretty awesome, actually. Yeah. I love the imagery that I'm getting in my head. Yeah. Um, Jonathan has an argument with the dean about, uh, hey, like I need you to defend me from all these lies about my experiments and everything like that. Um, and, but the dean is like telling you, like, your work is not... Like, look, your job's fine. You're not that much under fire and everything like that. And John is like, please, I need you in my corner. Okay. Everything. So, like, this friendship is clearly set up to be his last, is like his only grip on humanity, this this, this friendship that he has with the D, which is okay. very interesting because that's never been covered in the comics. But this is something that these guys, these writers, Shapiro and Rise, have been um, adding to it. So he's like, hey, I'm your boss, your therapist, and your friend. I'll always be here for you. And Jonathan walks out, and under his breath, he says, we'll see. So, uh, Bruce is talking to Alfred. There seems to be a lot of, honestly, Bruce is retired. It seems like all he does is talk to Alfred. <laughs> but, well, if he's retired, what else is he going to yeah, do? Yeah, I know. Um, Alfred says, trouble doesn't simply disappear because Batman is no longer around. Bruce says, some say Batman is the source of trouble, that he invites more crimes than he prevents. Alfred says, Batman exists due to crime, not the contrary. You have a responsibility to uphold. Bruce says, to whom? Alfred says, to the citizens of Gotham, to your relate parents, to Master Dick, most importantly to yourself, no one can afford to wait while you brood over yet another problem in your life. If I may be so bold, perhaps retiring Batman was a mistake. It is, after all, who you are. Bruce says, being Batman was a choice, as was my decision to hang up the cowl and cape. Bruce Wayne deserves a life, too. And Alfred's like, you call this living? You neglect... Okay, so Alfred, this Michael Goff Alfred would have kind of turned into a Michael Caine type Alfred. It's also kind of reminiscent of... Uh... Dark Knight Rises, where he took a break as yeah, well. Yeah, he says, you call this living, you neglect you neglect your business, you're better than old social... F I'm trying to do Michael Caine, but I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Caine, <laughs> you gotta say Michael, Michael Caine. The Paul size <laughs> of a tangerine. <laughs> you neglect your old business. Yeah, I can't do the broken Michael Caine voice. I'll, I'll have to ask uh, Steve Coogan or whatever. Uh, you abandon <laughs> all social functions and Master Dick believes you want nothing more to do with his. With his. Frankly, the mood in this household has become more funereal than again. 
who says Batman will always be part of me, but that part of my life will remain down there, buried for the time being. Okay. So again, he refuses to be it, and then we we have a flashback to the Batcave where Bruce says, "I want more for you than this. You need to discover who Dick Grayson is apart from Robin." Dick says, "I am who I am." Bruce says, "How can you? This is the only life you've known outside the circus. We're not here to entertain the crowds." And Dick says, "This is the life I've chosen." Bruce says, "Are you sure it didn't choose you? You need time away from here, away from me, away from this life." Dick says, "You've been trying to get rid of me ever since we met. You don't want me to be like you." Bruce says, "You're right. I want you to be better." Hmm. Yeah. Good. And then it says, if you're nothing about the suit, then you shouldn't have it. No, that's a different movie. Then Robin sees ba- Man Bat's wing flap in the night and gets an idea about his name again. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the night dumbest wing. Fucking, <laughs> the dumbest <fucking>. Night wing. <laughs> huh. They tie it all in. <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, so Dick says, so Batman will once again fly solo. And Bruce says, no, as of tonight, Batman will not fly at all. And then he shuts down the Batcave. So that's the end of that flashback. Uh, we cut. Why, I'm sorry, man. I know I sound like an idiot, but why is why is Bruce Wayne retired again? <laughs> I just told you because. Uh, well, I think it's it's. You know what? It's good been a long day. It's been a long day, man. <laughs> you know it's been what? A day you know what? Me. It's a good question because it feels like a repeat of Batman Forever, where it was just like I should stop being Batman before you. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, type yeah, of yeah. thing. Well, before I was just like I don't want you to go after Two Face. I want better for you, so I'm going to stop being Batman. And this one, it's like. I want you to like have a life of your own and not be in my shadow all the time. So okay. I'm going to retire the cape and cowl. So it's it. I don't know. It's not my favorite He's reason. He's doing it to let uh, Robin grow. To have Robin a life. So that's Dick why. Grayson grow. Yeah. So that's why Dick goes to college as a 50 year old and yeah. sees that. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, he has to go to college. Hey, man, you got to graduate sometime. <laughs> go ahead, you know? to Jonathan Gray. <laughs> you know, DeVry, man. <laughs> so. Right. Uh, it's Gotham City, so obviously it wouldn't be Gotham until unless somebody was getting mugged. So somebody's mugging. Somebody's <laughs> got to get mugged. <laughs> Someone's mugging. Somebody's got to go into a fucking alleyway. <laughs> and the guy looks up and he screams, and we hear a shrill shriek as the wings of a bat come down because it's not Batman who's coming down for the mugger. That's not Bruce. Yeah. So oh, wait, in the meantime, they wouldn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Jonathan Crane goes to Arkham Asylum, experience, is basically experimenting on a patient uh, named Jay. Uh, not patient Jay, because that's Joker, but literally his name is Jay, J-A-Y. Okay. Uh, throwaway character? Pretty yeah, much. just a kind of throwaway character. It's just mainly there to set up uh, Crane's experiments and everything, but it just sort of sets up what his actual experiments are for the audience who isn't familiar with uh, the Scarecrow at this point. Um, Dick finally shows up to uh, Wayne Manor, and uh, he wants to meet Bruce, but Alfred says, no, I'm happy to say he is not home. He went out a while ago, and Dick says, as whom? Okay. But Alfred's like, put your mind at ease, sir. Batman is still in retirement. Dick says, well, then I'm heading back to campus. There's a party with my name on it. Um, but anyways, he uh, he says, I just don't think I'm ready to fly solo. So okay. kind of an interesting thing is almost the opposite of Batman and Robin, actually, where Batman's like, you should fly solo without me. And Dick Reason's like, I'm not sure if I'm ready for that yet. Right, right. I don't know. Weird things going on, but I think they're just trying to ignore Batman and Robin, honestly. Um, yeah. Go back to yeah. Gotham City, and police are now investigating the mugger, and everybody's talking about how uh, it was a giant bat who stopped this mugger. So again, okay. more rumors about Batman and everything. And Gordon's like, these rumors are unsubstantiated and downright scandalous. And everyone's like, it's the bat, it's the bat. And Gordon's like, no comment. Uh, so this man bat is straight up killing people as well. Um, let me go back to it. I don't think he did actually. Just striking fear in people's hearts so he's far. Fi- yeah, he's striking fear in their hearts, but I don't think he killed the mugger. It's not clear. It doesn't say anything about what happened to the mugger specifically. It does seem like now that I think about it, he's kind of a sympathetic villain. Because oh wait, 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 no. It says wheel out the shrouded body of the dead mugger and hoist him into the ambulance. So never mind. Well, he does kill. <laughs> he he does kill, but I don't know how much I of that mean, is obviously being consciousness conscious of it. Yeah, it, yeah. He can't control it all, right? It's like yeah. it is like Hulk in that way. Yeah, exactly. But he. Like just like Hulk as well, it's like uh, being a passenger in a car. He can yeah. still see. Yeah, yeah. He can exactly. still kind of. Un- he's conscious of what's going on in yeah, some way. Kind of. He he kind yeah. of knows. So he hasn't quite gotten control of his body. He yet. doesn't like forget everything when he changes yeah. back. He remembers it all. Uh, he remembers. Generally speaking, remembers about yeah. the character, he okay. does. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the everyone in Gotham is now saying Batman's back and is killing people now, and Bruce is like, okay, well, the myth of Batman was better. In my actions alone, fear used to be my greatest weapon in the fight against crime. And Alfred says, perhaps, but not only do the criminals fear you, so do the citizens you swore to protect. 
Bruce yeah. says, what matters is that the innocent are in danger. They, they, there are still monsters out there. Albert says, I'm afraid it will always be so. The question is, what are you going to do about it? Okay. And we cut to the Batcave, and we see an empty suit that hasn't been worn in a while. Oh, And shit. a hand goes to grab for it. So on page 32. Then so turns 30. around to show that ass <laughs> once again. <laughs> Remember, Schumacher's not directing this oh, one. Oh, yeah, true. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> Bat butt. Batman goes out in a glider, actually. Oh. So he's gliding across the Gotham sky in this movie that contains Scarecrow in it. Uh, and, uh, and a man bat that could fucking Oh, well, yeah, the sw- Batman bat, bat too. So obviously it's not completely realistic like Batman Begins. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But he's searching for this man bat and it ends up having an encounter. And we finally get to see a full look of man bat, quote, a human bat hybrid wearing tattered, dingy clothing. Um, It'd be awesome. Now, the more I think about it, the more I love this. Just think I, of, I don't know. I, I want to see this now. I, like, imagine if Burton actually came back. He would love this shit. And did this one. Can you imagine a Burton Scarecrow and Man Bat? Hey, this is what he would have fucking. This would Ma- actually be better for him than, Scare- than Joker, Penguin, or Catwoman. Now that I think about it, this script seems like it was engineered to get Burton back. Yeah. Uh, they didn't say. There's an introduction here on like the making of this where they do say the writers do say that they talk to our uh, super house friends uh lee and Janice scott bachelor who wrote uh, <laughs> batman forever uh so they talked to them a little bit about it but it doesn't say anything about who they were specifically trying to court but it does seem like schumacher was already out by the time that uh they were pitching this i could see that yeah he's, he was done so batman has a fight with man bat and man bat ends up disappearing and of course some of it is because batman is kind of off his game because he hasn't done it for a while and some of it is because that would have been cool to yeah, see, well, like a kind of like a, cru- a rusty Batman. Yeah, plus like Clooney's already like known for having the salt and pepper hair type of thing, so you yeah. can play off the aging element. Yeah, on yeah, this. yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially because yeah. this is like the fifth movie in the franchise at this point. Yeah, uh, we go to the university, and Dick goes to a Halloween party, and he meets up with and turns to face. He has a brief conversation with a female classmate named Dinah, who's wearing skin tight black leather and fishnet stockings. <laughs> They're going to fucking introduce Canary in this motherfucker. Potentially Black Canary. So, Jesus. hey, Dinah, what are you supposed to be? She, she says an acrobat. And Dick says, trust me, acrobats don't wear that. <laughs> uh, and uh, she's like, I loved how you put Professor Crane in his place. That guy is scary. Dick says, I'm sure he'd want to hear that. And he keeps looking around. And he could swear to God that the scarecrow that was in the courtyard is moving. Mm. And he's wondering what's happening. And the scarecrow ends up startling him and appearing right in front of him. And sort of, he disappears, but Dick's walking around and he flitches in pain because it's almost like a dart shooting into his neck, but a piece of straw connects into his neck. Okay. And he starts seeing things. He starts seeing, hold on a second. Did I skip something? Because um, he shouldn't be. We can cut around it, bro. Don't worry. Yeah, hold on. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think I skipped anything. Okay. All right. We'll go back to it. Okay. So he, Dick Grayson then starts seeing the scare, the scarecrow around. He has a fight with the scarecrow and he rips the, the mask of the scarecrow off and he sees John Grayson and he sees his father and everything. And of course, oh, this is all shit. hallucination. Yeah. Yeah. He's for not sure. actually fighting for anybody. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. For everything. Sure. And, um, the body decays in his arms and Dick's like, no, don't leave me again. And, and the skeleton's like, you killed me. And so he's like hallucinating the death of his father uh, and all that again. In the meantime, everybody's God, surrounding him. And at this Halloween party, and they just think that he's a raving lunatic, and so the police have to take him in. And uh, Dinah Lance, the future Black Canary, says somebody called nine one one as they go, and they take uh, Dick Grayson to the ambulance. Okay, because they think that he's gone mad and had a psychotic breakdown. They put him in Arkham. Uh, yeah, they, they so they put them in Arkham under the care of Doctor Jonathan Crane. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes, indeed, of course. Um, who dressed up in the Scarecrow outfit in, as the disguise. So that he could uh, do that as revenge on Dick Grayson because he sees Dick Grayson as a bully just like the people who bullied him when he was growing up. Okay. So uh, let's see. Bruce looks at the, is in the back cave. He's like, why am I doing this again? I thought I was still cut out for it. And Alfred says, you appear to be cut up for it. So Alfred's being very putty in this <laughs> oh one. Oh, my God. <laughs> they don't have ads. Ice to see you, Master Grayson. <laughs> Ice to see you. <laughs> He's taking on a Schwarzenegger. Bruce, line. I am Alfred in this movie. <laughs> Because you were the one who's come out. Arnold is fucking jacked in this movie, bro. Bruce, you should be lifting more. (laughs) Oh, my God. Eat more protein. (laughs) 
I shoot testosterone <laughs> in my butt every morning, only, Master Bruce. Only 225 on the deadlift. Stop being a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's too hot in here. <laughs> it is. Uh, Alfred says, I'm afraid there's more bad news. Master Dick has been committed to Arkham Asylum. Oh, so shit. So Bruce Wayne is like, what the fuck? So he goes to Arkham Asylum and we meet Bruce him. Bruce is like, what the fuck? <laughs> no, he, doesn't, he doesn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> he turns to Riddler and now what the fuck am I saying <laughs> he turns, we are not high by the he way turns to di- he turns to who the fuck is he talking to again he's talking to Alfred he turns to Alfred and he's like what in the fuck what darnation oh man this is totally going, out, he's going off the rails totally out of character man oh my god <laughs> he's saying that he- who wrote this <laughs> <laughs> who wrote this <laughs> Got Billy Bob Thornton as Bruce Wayne with Arnold as Alfred. Mm-hmm. Oh, dude, Sling Blade! What if Sling Blade showed up as a fucking Batman villain? I guess it would have been too easy to figure out. You wouldn't have to go into detective mode too far, too long to figure that one out. Uh, Imagine, okay, maybe Sling Blade like a redneck hick version of Killer Croc type of thing. That could be interesting. It'd be kind of actually be kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it would be. Uh, all right, more <laughs> serious. What the fuck is this talking? We, talking about we are not drunk, well, or high. No one is. We have a long day. had water, dude. <laughs> it's just hot. We have heat stroke, maybe. Uh, maybe. Okay, so we go to Arkham and we meet an old friend from the Batman Forever script, Doctor Burton, the administrator at uh, Arkham Asylum. Doctor Tim Burton. <laughs> Doctor Tim Burton. <laughs> 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 they do make him look like Tim Burton at the end of Batman Forever. That's right. That's everything. right. That's right. <laughs> Actually, so Dr. Burton talks to Bruce, and uh, Dr. Burton's clearly the boss there, but Jonathan Crane is one of the head doctors still. And okay. um, Bruce says he shouldn't be here at all, Doctor, and Jonathan Crane enters and he says, I'm afraid that's my doing. Okay. And so Dr. Burton introduces the two of them. Uh, Bruce Wayne, meet Dr. Jonathan Crane, resident staff psychologist. Mr. Grayson is under his supervision. And um, Jonathan's like, your continuing support of this institution is most appreciated. Though one wonders why you do it. Mm. And Bruce says, there are some things better kept locked away. Jonathan says, there's nothing to be afraid of here. And Bruce says, I want to see him, doctor. And Dr. Burton says, let me know if there's anything else you require, because let me get the fuck out of this tense conversation between you two. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Let me get the fuck out. Yeah. uh, Batman swears a lot in this. (laughs) A lot of me editorializing this, guys. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But there's an interesting thing where uh, they they say Bruce uh, talks about I must discuss your phobias of philosophy with you, and Jonathan says high praise indeed. I take it you're acquainted with fear, and Bruce says a little. <laughs> so a nice little dance around between two guys who use fear as a weapon in this. Yeah, I mean Scarecrow works so well. Yeah, he's it, not so a cool. technically classic villain, right? Uh, not typically, but like I think after Batman and Robin, they're just like we have to go dark, and who's like the next villain that we haven't used that's dark? Scarecrow because is he, the whole fear thing. But like if, when you think classic, I mean outside of even Adam West, the yeah. Adam West villains are from an old time, like, yeah, yeah, right. Mm-hmm. So, but Scarecrow's a little bit newer than those, right? Mm-hmm. He's newer than Penguin. He's newer than Two Face. He's newer. Mm-hmm. He's a little bit newer, right? Yeah. He came out in like the late sixties, early seventies. Uh, I guess 60s, we could Google this shit. Sixties era, and, and everything. Uh, so he he's somewhat classic, not as well known, but he's somewhat yeah. classic in this. And he was just way too dark for sixty six Batman, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I mean, th- there was a character named I think Shame, uh, played by Chris Robertson, who ended up becoming Uncle Ben, uh, who did douse Adam West in fear gas at one point. Oh, he did. Yeah. Oh, but well, shit. Obviously, Adam West was just the Adam West Batman fear gas at that point was just like, oh, uh, you oh, know, yeah, it was, not sure. it. It was yeah. not like it wasn't him hallucinating his dead parents coming back to life and shit. That fucking when Batman douses the guy and you get to see the like the hallucination of the bat. Yes. In uh, Batman Begins, one of the best scenes. Mm-hmm. All right. Keep going. So uh, he they keep talking about Dick Grayson and Jonathan says you know it's not unusual for a boy of his age to experiment. So he's trying to chalk this all up to college drugs and shit. Right. He says witnesses say he kept shouting, "Don't leave me." Does he have any abandonment issues you're aware of? <laughs> So you see, there's a lot of thematic ties into all, yeah. all this stuff here. Yeah, it's good. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the young man lost his parents around this time of year, didn't he? Because remember, Batman Forever took place around Halloween. Because Two Face and Riddler stormed the cats. They storm Wayne Manor on Halloween night. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, so he says, Bruce is like, I'll make amends for any damage done, but I want him out of here immediately. Okay. And Jonathan's like, I'm afraid there's one instance where your money won't help you, Mister Wayne. I have the legal right to hold him here until I say he's fit to leave. 
Okay. So this is kind of the opposite of the Protosevich uh, script where Batman is in Arkham and is separated from Robin who's out there. This is Robin being in Arkham and Bruce wondering how the hell to get him out. So Bruce pushes for Gordon to uh, to basically help him figure out what's going on with Professor Crane over there. How can he get Dick Grayson okay. out of there? Uh, and what other types of ways to you know get out of this and he hears okay. about the langstrom disappearance and bruce is like you know it's curious how there's been two interesting uh things right around halloween at this university the disappearance okay. of kirk langstrom and dick grayson and gordon just encourages him, him encourages him to say take care of yourself bruce and try to get some rest and bruce says i've rested long enough oh shit so, into action baby into action so he's in the back cave pondering over the back computer alfred says um have you been at it all night, sir? Bruce is like, first you reprimand me for not working. Now you're on my case about working too much. <laughs> so much back and forth between him and Alfred. I but think. I mean, to be fair, this actually does read very Clooney, ba- Clooney Bruce. Uh huh. When I read this, even before I read this before we rewatched Batman and Robin. Okay. But even then, I could I, when I read it, I had trouble envisioning Keaton or Kilmer. I it just felt like Clooney the whole time. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it is on that. But he's the analyzing. intention was for Clooney to continue as well. Yeah, the intention Definitely, was 100%. that this was going to be the redemption round for Clooney. And Clooney was down for this. I think he as far as we know. would have been down for it, but uh, I don't know if he read this script. Okay. It wasn't even that far right. along, huh? Right. So uh, Bruce had explored the university and found the straw that had hit Dick. Okay. And uh, he's testing it, and he says there's a residue on the straw that stimulates the human limbic system, specifically the amygdala. Okay. So... Detective scientist Batman in action right Finally, here. Finally, yeah, something right. going on yeah. here. Which, to be fair, Clooney was already kind of you know doing that in Batman and Robin. Yeah, he did a little bit. Yeah. So Alfred says, if I recall my anatomy lessons correctly, that portion of the brain deals with memories and emotions related to survival. Bruce says this compound seems to induce the release of norepinephrine. I probably butchered that pronunciation, whatever. Uh, a very concentrated release that is basically stuff related to anxiety or, in extreme cases, phobia. Okay. So this is Bruce figuring out that... Uh, Dick was hit with something that is meant to cause Dick to pretty much hallucinate his fears, everything. So at this point, Bruce has already figured out the fear gas type of stuff. Okay. Uh, and Alfred says, it's good to have you back. Okay. So good, good. this is a nice little thing. Uh, Bruce goes to visit the dean of the university with his findings uh, and everything, but uh, he there's not really enough to sort of accuse Dr. Crane about this type of stuff. On it, so uh, mm. but he's, the dean, he's suspecting him at this point. He's suspecting him, but the dean yeah. is like he's got Jonathan Crane's back okay. on this. Uh, so, you know, Mr. Wayne, you'll be instrumental in Master Grayson's recovery, probably more so than any psychiatrist. Uh, and then he leaves, and that's when Bruce Wayne runs into Francine Langstrom. Okay, and Francine is fucking pissed at Bruce <laughs> Wayne because she thinks that Bruce is spending more time trying to uh, divert the police to investigating this college kid who got high at a Halloween party okay. than on the disappearance of her husband. Okay. So uh, Bruce, I mean, it says, you must be Francine Langstrom. And because he's already figured it out because Batman is the world's greatest detective again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, he says, I think you're misinterpreting my actions. Did your husband have any dealings with Dr. Crane? Because I think there's a connection. And now he gets Francine on board. So the only female character in this movie is Francine Langstrom. Uh, there is no romance of any kind. In the whole movie. In Batman, with Batman. Okay. It's, the love story of this movie is between Francine and Kirk. Good, Man that's good. Yeah. So it's a kind of interesting uh, way to go about we it. We had four movies with him, like, had, yeah, dealing with chicks, you we, know. And funny enough, Clooney, despite his reputation, uh, didn't, when he, it was his turn as Batman, there was no big love story type of thing, really. Yeah, Julie yeah, Madison yeah. was in, like, three scenes, and that's it. He's just, like, leaving her. Yeah. It's, like, kind of throwaway almost. Yeah, yeah exactly. So he, he brings up to Francine the connection between, mm-hmm. like, Crane possibly being responsible for her husband's disappearance and for what happened to, you know, he, the guy that he's supposed to be guarding for. So he right. leaves his number to Francine and everything. Uh, meanwhile, Dick tries to break out of Arkham Asylum. Uh, and in response, Jonathan hits him again with the fear gas. Okay. Uh, let's see. Other news, police still have no leads on the disappearance of Kirk as Man Bat's listening to a, uh, a report about uh, Man Bat being missing. And Man Bat hears uh, the name Francine. And he says, Fran- he actually enunciates her name. So he's As like, the Bat? As the Bat, yeah. Wow. So Man Bat st- is able to start speaking now. 
Oh my god, this is wild. This would have been a uh, a hell of a animatronic CGI type thing in order we're, to make dude, this believable. Ninety nine, yeah. This would have been probably uh, animatronic even like, ne- at this point. This would have had to have been like a majority of this budget you'll notice the action scenes in this script as we get further and further along are very low budget compared to uh-huh. what you saw in batman forever and batman and robin and i think because yeah, they were yeah. smart to know you gotta i gotta have like we gotta have the superhero costumes the batmobile the scarecrow costume but most of all man bat has to yeah. be believable yeah, yeah, and everything. yeah. And that's where most of the budget that's why go. this shit wasn't made dude <laughs> probably yeah. i mean i mean there's a lot of reasons it's expensive but... as fuck but yeah Hey everybody, it's Andrew. I just wanted to tell you about our friend Israel's retro gaming shop, RetroCo. If you go to retro-ko.com, you'll be able to see all of his retro gaming goodies. If you wanted to get that Sega Saturn hidden gem from back in the day, or if you wanted to get the Famicom disc system that you never got as a kid, or any other type of retro game that you were into, or uh, import game, please go to RetroCo.com. That's Retro-KO.com. And if you use the Superhouse code Johnson's Ballsack, you'll be able to get a little bit of a discount at checkout. So please, once again, if you could just go to RetroCo.com, you can also go to Facebook.com slash RetroCo with no hyphen. That's R-E-T-R-O-K-O. You'll be able to find him on Facebook as well. If you were looking for that PlayStation import game that you never got, if you were looking for that Mega Drive game that you never got, or any other kind of retro game, any import game, it could even be European. Israel also curates bundles at RetroCo, and he'll curate that bundle just for you. So please, go check him out. If you put in the code Johnson's Ballsack at checkout, you'll receive a Superhouse discount. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we go to the university boardroom, and on the board are, of course, the dean, who is uh, Dean Hollowell, Crane's friend, Francine Langstrom, and Dr. Burton. This Hollowell character is created for the movie? He's created for this. I think okay. so, yeah. yeah. Uh, and so they all have charges against him on professional negligence, conduct, on becoming a doctor and professor, willful misappropriation of governmental and private funding. So all this type of stuff based off of what he's doing at Arkham Asylum. And so uh, while they're saying this, Jonathan is equating this to his childhood traumas of being bullied and everything and sees them as, as the bullies. Uh, and they all sort of have to agree on whether or not to suspend Crane from the board and take away okay. his rights there. And so Dr. Burton, his boss at Arkham, agrees. Okay. And says that he is out of the Arkham job. Francine agrees because she thinks that he has something to do with uh, her husband's disappearance. And then the last person is the dean. And there's a, there's a dramatic moment but because of all the pressure, the dean agrees. Okay. And that's the last straw. Again, no pun intended. Uh, for Dr. Crane. <laughs> because oh that God. was his last group on humanity. That, that's that his relationship. Pun. But his puns are the movie. <laughs> the last straw. <laughs> <laughs> that's the last straw. <laughs> the last... Wait, who am I? <laughs> um, <laughs> Dr. Crane, you are hereby relieved of your professorship and any benefits commensurate with said title. Furthermore, your services at Arkham Asylum will discontinue from this moment forth. So they agree not to press criminal charges, but they take away his job and his whole livelihood and everything. And okay. Jonathan feels betrayed by okay. this, especially by the dean specifically. Okay. But he wants to go okay. after all of them. Because, okay. again, he equates them to his childhood trauma of being bullied and, and everything like that. Right, right, right. Uh, in the meantime, okay, here's the big problem that I have with the script. Uh, Dick now is back at Wayne Manor. Okay. Uh, there's no. I guess it's because Jonathan Crane is no longer at Arkham, and Doctor Burton might have agreed to release him. But that's kind of a plot hole. This feels like there's something missing. Honestly, here. this is like what a first draft too. Yeah, like, this that's is true, just so. they didn't get far enough with this shit. That's yeah. really what it is. Mm-hmm. So Dick is in his bedroom, and he's still con- he's looking at a photo of the Flying Grayson because he's thinking about his his dad because he just saw his dad in the hallucination. Okay. And everything. And Bruce shows up, his, you know, surrogate father, and they have a conversation about, you know, Bruce checking up on him and everything. And Bruce says, maybe I shouldn't have sent you away. I'm sorry. Okay. Dick says, don't be the man responsible has been taken care of. Bruce says, Crane simply exposed your fears. He's not the cause of them. Mm. So. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's good. That's good. The main arc in this movie for Batman and Robin is between the two of them that, uh, you know, their past that happened in okay. between Batman and Robin and, and this one. Okay. And trying to resolve those things. And they're almost forced to resolve those things because of Scarecrow, because Scarecrow keeps doing all this weird shit with fear gas. Right, right, right. right. So, uh, Francine is uh, listening to Kirk's old recordings 
and you know who can hear these recordings because he got the ears of the bat is man bat as he's outside <laughs> and he's listening in he has enhanced hearing and echolocation as a bat yeah, as, yeah. as everything he's got the same thing and um he starts remembering things and he remembers he became this way because of crane and so man bat is going to start hunting after scarecrow Oh, uh, so Batman's caught between villains. Yeah, which so is that's kind of cool. This is kind. This is interesting. Yeah. Man Bat is not a villain so much as an antihero who wants to kill Scarecrow. So Man Bat's almost in the role that Robin was in in Batman Forever and yeah, wanting to kill yeah. the main villain, but an actual monster. But an actual monster yeah, this time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty awesome actually. So uh, let's see, dude. I was never sold on Man Bat until now. Until now, this is <laughs> because pretty cool. Yeah, pretty cool. You should yeah. check out uh, the original comics on it. Uh, yeah, I on need it. to. This, I can recommend pretty, a few. Pretty cool. Uh, but Francine's pretty responsible about uh, Crane being responsible for uh, for her husband's disappearance, and calls Bruce Wayne about it. And Bruce is like, "Let me see if my influence on Commissioner Gordon can get to the bottom of this." Bottom of this. Um, and Batman says uh, to Alfred, "I think it's time I pay a visit to a psychiatrist." And Alfred okay. says, "The irony of that statement does not escape me." Again, Alfred is just full of. <laughs> he's, he's got it. This. He's got the one liners. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, my god. He's a sassy old man. So Batman emerges, uh, and Robin shows up. And he says, don't push me away this time. I need to see Crane get what he deserves. Okay. So Robin wants revenge on Crane for putting him into the asylum. Robin's always wanting some fucking He always wants revenge. Like... He's always leading with his emotions. At least this version of Dick Grayson is, is kind of a mix of Dick Grayson and Jason Todd. Yeah, it's a little bit, yeah. yeah. So Batman's like, let's move. <laughs> um, Jonathan Crane is in his lab. And uh, he keeps Chris getting... Chris O'Donnell takes some Centrum Silver. <laughs> Centrum Silver. <laughs> Has some oatmeal before bed and everything. Some prune juice before heading out. Uh, so Jonathan Crane, we get a full flashback of what Jonathan Crane's life was like with the bullies and where they get scared away because of Mr. Crane, who is his father, who's this imposing figure, brandishing a pitchfork because they were on a farm. He's known as Old Man Crane. And Mr. Crane tells... Young Jonathan, boy, you can't let people like that terrorize you your whole life. You know what you must do. Burton would have killed these scenes. <clears throat> yeah. God so damn. So Crane's he thinking about that. It. Uh, Crane's thinking about that, and uh, he dons the Scarecrow mask because he wants revenge. And right around that time, as he's donning the Scarecrow mask, he sees, in a reflection, a bat-like shadow show up. And he says, out of retirement for me, I'm honored, and I'm ready. And then he turns around, and his face drops, and he says, what the hell are you? It's not Batman. It's Man Bat. Oh shit! So Man Bat comes in, and there's a big fight with uh, Man Bat, and Scarecrow hits it. Okay, so here's the overall thing: Man Bat's fighting Scarecrow. Batman and Robin show up. All right. Now there's a whole. They're like, "What the hell is going on?" This Bat creature's yeah. around. It's, it's Our fighting. villains are fighting each other. <laughs> Our is, are fighting. I'm weird about this. Scarecrow's like, "Screw all of you! I'm hitting all of you with the fear toxin." So he hits all of them with the straws. Uh, okay. Man Bat sees Francine being like, you know, you're killing me, you're killing me. God, he so, gives the fear toxin <clears throat> to him in bat form. That's wild. He does, it's, it's, yeah. That's pretty cool, actually, yeah. yeah. Uh, what have you become? You're not my husband, you're a monster. So he sees his fear of losing Francine. Dick Grayson, um, and uh, let's see, I think Dick Grayson sees the same thing. I would imagine he's back on the fucking um, flying trapeze and shit. Yeah, uh, but Bruce has an interesting one because he is sort of looking and seeing that he's going getting older and everything. So, you know, the fact that he's dying and becoming decrepit and all those types of things. Okay, <clears throat> interesting. So he's... I feel like if he was younger, he would have gone back to the time where he was a kid seeing his parents shot. But in this, he's he's older, so he sees... He's his biggest fear in his in his life at this point yeah, is just getting I think older. What we find is that a lot of their the fear hallucinations have to deal with each other. So Dick okay. is seeing the loss of a father figure. Bruce mm-hmm. is seeing himself being too old to be around for for, you know, his surrogate son. Okay. Anyway. So this is all tying back into their relationship. Okay. Um Again, so we are about an hour into this movie, and already there's more character depth than what we got in Batman and Robin. It's always at the script level. They kind of they kind of <laughs> nail it, and then the producers or whoever the fuck fucks it over. Uh, so <clears throat> they reconvene in the Batcave because obviously Scarecrow gets away, Man Bat gets away. You Man know, Bat can just fucking fly away. Man Bat just flies and screes and goes and yeah, goes out. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but Scarecrow's like, "Ha ha! I made you all face your fears," and he leaves. Do they say? Can you go back to that page? Yeah. Do they say what? Uh, 
time of day it is because I feel like if it was dawn or something, it'd be very cool. It just says night. It says night. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Bruce brings up what he discovered through the going through the toxins because he's never been through it again. He's never been through it before. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah for so, sure. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, the effects yeah, disappeared yeah. when the water dissipated from the gas. So he's talking about the sprinklers that okay. went off from it. Uh, narrowed coxin must be a short-lived and very gaseous form. And Dick is feeling like he's pushing, Bruce is pushing him away again by not telling him what he saw okay. in the fear and gas. So again, they're having the same old argument. I get like maybe it gets a little tiring because it's always Chris O'Donnell's Robin criticizing Batman, but yeah, it, it fits the yeah. arc of what they're going through. Um, <clears throat> but uh, they're starting to look for. Uh, they remember that Scarecrow got hit with Man Bat's talons through the okay. face, okay. so he's got lacerations across the face. Um, Alfred says no hospitals report admitting any patient with severe facial lacerations. Dick says no one can endure that much pain. Bruce says assuming he survived, he won't be hard to recognize. We go to the old barn where Crane used to grow up. Okay. <clears throat> and Crane starts. He takes the mask off his head, and his face is all fucked up, and he starts stitching his own face back together and we find his... I mean okay look if he's a doctor he's got maybe some anesthesia of some sort well he's still the thing. be kind of rough to do <clears throat> he it's revealed that crane has a condition where he doesn't feel pain okay yeah those people do exist so uh he doesn't feel it he obviously it's it's dangerous for him to be bleeding out and everything but he doesn't feel it so uh at this point his skin is all weathered and stuff and he's been disfigured so it's almost like his body is becoming a scarecrow. Yeah, it's it's this. good. Again, good more ha- more horror, horror elements in this. Yeah, yeah, I think this it's excellent. Way darker than the last couple Schumacher. Like this is arguably going to get this is going to get darker than Batman Returns. Really, this is the darkest <laughs> one ever. Yeah, I feel like just yeah. because of the nature of the villains. And, yeah. and shit. Uh, we go to the Langstrom home and Francine hears something out there because the dog keeps barking, and he hears she hears a voice say Francine, and she says, "Who's that?" and it says, don't be scared. And it's man bat. Okay. And uh, It's Dr. Like, Burton again. Go away wherever you are. <laughs> it just shows up out of nowhere. Dr. Tim Burton. <laughs> Dr. Tim Burton is here. <laughs> oh, Get out shit. of here if you're not Johnny Depp or Helena Bonham Carter. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> uh, and a man bat uh, does a gesture where he blows her a kiss, which is okay. what Kirk did in the very beginning. Okay, yeah. And that's what makes her figure out, oh, my God, it's you. It's Kirk. Kirk is the man badge. He's the creature. That's why he's been disappearing this whole time. So we get a nice little reunion scene about in the midpoint here. Mm-hmm. Uh, Scarecrow just goes on. This goes on full with, I mean, Burton would have t- killed this thing. Down Doors to gigantic, decrepit barn open. Scarecrow steps out from the candlelit barn into the dark farmyard. He is nothing more than a billowy, lanky silhouette with a gauze-shrouded face, a terrifying image. He walks across the same yard from his flashbacks, though it appears to have been untouched by human hands for years. He stops at the old wooden fence that borders miles of a dried, dead corn. In the distance, green haze shrouds Gotham City. Scarecrow claps his hands together as he faces the city and says, And I will show you something different from either your shadow at morning striding behind you or your shadow at evening rising to meet you. I will show you fear in a handful of dust. He spreads his arms. A crow lands on one outstretched arm. <laughs> oh, my God. So imagine that. <laughs> like, yeah, imagine yeah. that being directed by yeah. Burton. Uh, Dick goes to the cemetery to the graves of his parents <clears throat> and says, I wish you were all with me. I wish I could have prevented all this. Uh, I don't know who I am anymore. I thought I could lose myself in something and the pain would go away. Is that something being Robin? But it's not working. I'm afraid. afraid of everything, it seems, and I don't know what's happening to me. I want my life back. I want myself back. I don't know who I am, and I feel lost and alone. Okay. <clears throat> So that's what he's dealing with. Bruce is still trying to figure out what this creature is. And as he thinks about it and talks it over with Alfred, uh, he says, we still have a missing biogenesis on our hands, one who researched genetic engineering of animals. And Alfred is like, are you suggesting the creature is Dr. Langstrom? And Bruce is like, it is man size and displays intelligence. So again, Clooney's Batman has figured out that man bat is, is Kirk Langstrom. Again, like Clooney's Batman is, might be the smartest one out of the nice <laughs> Batman if we were to if this were a real thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. Langstrom went after Crane for retribution. It's only logical where he'll go next. Okay. So we go to Francine and Bat- Man Bat's talking to her about uh, you know, my memory's returning, it's all foggy, but I remember it was Crane and I want to kill him and everything. <clears throat> Crane needs to die. Never thought a man I could hate like this, but I am not a man. 
And Francine says, don't say that. You're still Kirk Langstrom. You still have his mind and his heart. And Man's Bat's like, no, this is what I am now. He can't go back. I thought he goes he feels, back and forth. Well, in the comics he does, but this one, he's not sure if he can. He thinks that he's like this forever. Okay. And Francine, who's also a fellow doctor, is like, we could fix this. We can find yeah, a way yeah, to revert yeah, you yeah, back yeah. to being Kirk Langstrom again. Such a sympathetic, quote-unquote, villain. Yeah. 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 And she keeps telling him, you know, I love you. And he's like, how can you love a monster? And she's like, you're not a monster. And Man Bat refuses. And he's like, Kirk Langstrom is dead. Jonathan Crane killed him. And I crave his blood. <laughs> Wow, uh, <clears throat> man, this is this is crazy. But uh, Francine sort of talks him into potentially, you know, working with her and figuring out the cure and everything okay. before he goes out and on this revenge spree. So he agrees to do that. Uh, we cut to Gotham State University, and the dean is, uh, you know, standing at the window, and a crow shows up at his window. Okay, <clears throat> so here we go. Jonathan Crane shows up, and he's like, "You were my friend, Roger. I trusted you." Uh, I think you betrayed me. You took advantage of our confidentiality to have me removed. You conspired to end my research and protect your own position. Roger says, Jonathan, you're scaring me. And Jonathan says, you don't know the meaning of the word, but you will. And uh, he basically start. he inoculates him with a fear gas. I'm looking to see if there's anything else before that. He inoculates him with a fear gas, and the dean starts seeing all these rats crawl all over him. Oh, my God. And, uh, you know, Scarecrow's like, trick or treat. And, and Roger's like screaming because he sees all these rats. And so he takes the letter opener from his desk to stab at the rats. But he's really stabbing himself to death. And okay. the Dean dies from oh killing himself God. from the hallucinations. <laughs> that actually, there's a similar scene of that in Swamp Thing. Really? It's wild. This guy starts to see shit. Yeah. And he is like cutting at his arm. It's rated R. Oh, you see all the man. blood. And he, yeah. dude, the guy puts his arm down the fucking, um, what do you call it? Garbage disposal. Oh, God. Dude, it's, <clears throat> dude, it's rough. Jesus it's a rough Christ. scene. Um, we cut to Kurt Langstrom's lab. Uh, okay, so basically, a Scarecrow has gone to kill the Dean. Robin shows up, but he shows up too late, and he sees the Dean's dead. So it's like, fuck, okay. Okay. Scarecrow is struck again. Uh, Man Bat's talking to Francine about uh, trying to find a cure, and uh, he... Takes the uh, he takes the serum and it doesn't work. And Francine's like, "Give it time." And he's like, "No, the initial transformation was immediate." Um, and he he's just convinced this is not going to work. Crane took everything from me. I'm damned to existence. Um, and he skulks away. So he okay. he's pretty much resigned to wanting revenge on Crane. <clears throat> uh, Bruce talks to Dick about finding the straw in uh, the office that caused the dean to kill himself. And so they start looking and. Uh, they let's see okay so he realizes if the dean has been killed anyone else who went after him is going to be next so he goes to visit Francine Langstrom as Batman he's like you may be in danger and Francine's like how and he says have you had contact with your husband since his disappearance and Francine's like what no of course not <laughs> okay <laughs> okay uh, she's lying to the bat yes Batman and he basically is like, Mrs. Langstrom, if you know where Kirk is, please, I need your help. And so does he. And she ends up leading him to Man Bat in the clock tower. Okay. And they have a conversation. It's always in these fucking towers. Man it's Bat and Going Batman. back to the first yeah. one, I guess. Yeah. Man Bat says, leave me alone. You fight criminals. I'm no criminal. Batman's like, I'm not here to fight, Dr. Langstrom. Um, and Francine's like, he needs to talk to you. Maybe he can help us and everything. And Batman's like, Jonathan Crane murdered Dean Hollowell this morning. I need to know why he, you attacked Crane. Did he do this to you? And Man Bat says, Hollowell's death is on your hands. If you hadn't stopped me, I would have killed Crane. Okay. Um, Batman says he needs to be helped like you. So it's kind of, again, Clooney's Batman <laughs> is staying true to the characterization of Batman right. Robin. He wants to help the villain, even when it's somebody as terrible as the Scarecrow version. But Man Bat feels that he's beyond help. Uh, he says, you're a freak because you choose to be. I can't remove my mask. Uh, Batman says, you're only a monster if you allow it. You have a choice. But you, if you give in to hatred and revenge, you really will become a monster. Right. So standard stuff that we've seen from the previous movies, but the monster thing is more of an element here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Man Bat says, this is our third meeting, and you still live. If we meet again, that will change. Okay. And Batman turns to Mrs. Langstrom and says, I'm sorry. It seems your husband is still missing. Mm. And then he leaves. So, of course, Batman has to drop the mic as he leaves. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but Man Bat's like, no one will stand between me and Crane's death. And Francine says, does that include me? By the way, we're very far into the script now. Yeah. And there's been no Gordon, right? 
Uh, Gordon's been around just to say that there's not a lot of uh, just just to claim that Batman's not actually oh, okay. doing these killings. I oh, gotcha. All right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. I just I just noticed that. So Dick uh, is in the Batcave and tells him, "Hey, I managed to crack his personal files. He was born with congenital an- analgia. I'm probably butchering that too. A rare condition that deadens his nervous system." Bruce says that explains why he apparently doesn't feel pain. Uh, Dick says, according to Hollowell's records, Crane's emotional reactions heightened as a result of this loss. So the body will overstimulate one sense if deprived of another. So it kind of explains the why he's going been going oversensitivity off the rails. to yeah. the uh, childhood bullying. Mm-hmm. He was unable yeah. to cope with even the slightest confrontation. His father kept moving them from place to place every time Jonathan suffered an emotional episode. Eventually, they settled on a farm outside Gotham to be isolated and everything. Uh, so let's see. From here, they kind of keep talking about the fear stuff that uh, Crane was talking about in lectures because Dick was a student. So I, re- I, I don't know. I really like the idea of Dick Grayson being a former college student under Jonathan Crane. That's that's pretty. Yeah, cool it's good. It's good. Uh, and then Crane's teaching what psychology? What's yeah, psychology te- yeah. and everything. Yeah. Uh, and Dick's like, "How do you stop a man who feels no pain and no fear?" So that's, that's kind of cool line. Uh, we go to uh, Wayne Enterprises. And uh, let's see, Scarecrow ends up attacking him okay. with uh, fear toxin again for over there. And he now envisions his parents and his parents don't recognize him. And he's like, who are you? Get out of this house. And he's like, I'm your son. I'm you. And they're like, you look nothing like our son. And he realizes he's in the bat suit. Okay. And they like don't approve of him being Batman and everything. So again, okay. it's kind of, it feels That's like cool. kind of, that would be cool. a cool scene for sure. Kind of a tangent. I would have combined that with previous fear toxin stuff. Um, but uh, Bruce realizes I have been pushing you away you, you and everyone else uh, Crane's fear toxin made me realize the only thing that scared me was myself I haven't known any other life outside of being Batman I was afraid that role would consume my existence I would grow old and die without ever enjoying a life as Bruce Wayne so I hung up the bat suit but suppressing half of my identity sent the other into a downward spiral I realized if I ran away from who I am I'm nothing Dick says sounds like Crane actually helped you when he intended to hurt you Bruce says, Dick, before you moved in with me, you were ready to face the world on your own. I prevented that, and since then, I've been running your life. Ultimately, I wanted you to take over as Batman. Oh, shit. And Dick is surprised by this, and Dick says, there's only one Batman. I could never replace you. Bruce says, in time you could, with the right education, the right training. But I know now that's not my decision to make. It's yours. You have to choose your own path. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and Alfred says, excuse me for interrupting, Master Bruce. There's a rather trivial matter of tonight's university fundraiser. Do you plan to attend? Uh, and Dick's like, that's definitely where Crane will strike next. All the university bigwigs will be there. Perfect opportunity for revenge. And Alfred's like, well, I shall expect them not. I would tell them not to expect Bruce Wayne there. So, uh, we have a very creepy ass scene that comes up where Arkham Asylum, a guard is resting. Okay. I'm just going to read bits and pieces. A guard rests near the door, closed door and yawns. His reverie breaks when a quick flash of lightning reveals Scarecrow's gangly form stop atop Arkham's gate. He's literally on top of the gate of Arkham. Okay. Another flash, Scarecrow is gone. The guard approaches the gate but finds nothing. He turns, heading back to his post. A noose drops over his head and hoists him into the air. His body spasms and goes limp. Scarecrow dismounts the gate and relieves the dead guard of his keys. He gives the legs a push. The body swings. So Scarecrow goes on a murdering rampage through Arkham Asylum. It's pretty fucking dark, man. A faint whistling Jesus. drifts down the dark, long dark hall to the tune of If I Only Had a Brain. Scarecrow dances to the beat of the song. Oh, my God. As he nears the end of a reframe and orderly rounds the corner, heading, heating the tune. In a fluid mov- movement, Scarecrow uses a sickle to slice the surprise guard's throat. Scarecrow finishes the last six notes of the tune and continues on his way. Uh, this is crazy, man. He, yeah, he basically goes in and kills everybody because uh, he's out to call. He's basically out to, out to kill Dr. Burton. Uh, and back to the Batcave, they hear there's been a disturbance at Arkham Asylum. Uh, and they're like, could we be wrong about the university? And Robin says, I'll cover the dinner. You check on the asylum. He can't be in both places at once. And Batman's like, are you sure you'll be okay by yourself? Robin says, you have nothing to fear. And Batman says, the night is still young. And so they both individually go off on their separate ways. So this kind of ties into like being separate people. Okay. Going off and finding separate, their separate ways to figure out what's going on. Robin shows up in the university. He sees that there's no sign of Crane. Batman goes to Arkham Asylum. Uh, and Gordon's outside. And uh, they talk about, okay, are all the inmates accounted for? Uh, right. on here what are the casualties the detective says six dead including dr burton four others wounded there's a dr quinzel in critical condition okay uh harleen there was going to be a setup for harley showing up in another movie uh, okay here so surveillance cameras reveal someone dressed like a scarecrow 
Uh, and then Gordon hears an engine, and he whips around and sees the Batmobile race away, and a smile crosses his face, and Gordon says to himself, it's good to have you back. Oh, good. Nice. That's good. So Batman contacts uh, Robin at the university. He says, Robin, it was a diversion. Keep your eyes open for the Scarecrow. Uh, and so at the fundraiser, Francine Langstrom's there talking about the Gotham University, trying to raise it. And as she's uh, on there, everybody starts reacting, and she turns around, she see, and they see that there's a figure in a pumpkin head, an oversized burlap cloak, waltzing in behind her. So this would have been creepy. Uh, and everyone's like, what the hell is that? Uh, and it's revealed, of course, to be, guess who, Jonathan Crane. Yeah. And he's out to take out uh, Francine and basically everybody at the university for rejecting him and says, let the nightmares begin. And so he tries to, uh, and he's got a fucking sky. So again, like all the imagery of Scarecrow is in this movie that wasn't didn't end up in what we saw with it, but he throws a pumpkin under the crowd and, and smashes. And Batman Begins. And Batman Begins. Yeah, you know, looking does. back on that, like it was, it, it's a good movie, but like it feels like, He's underused almost. He, yeah, you know? he is. It, it, like, Ra's al Ghul is, is the main villain of that movie. Like, Scarecrow, Scarecrow is a side more, villain. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, Ra's al Ghul's got the League of Assassins and the, yeah. whatever. That that really plays into his arc and his time period. I get it. Mm-hmm. Makes perfect sense. It is a good movie. But Scarecrow's ultimately, to me personally, mm-hmm. a little bit more interesting. Yeah. Uh, this, <clears throat> like, this imagery here would have been amazing, though. So he yeah, throws the pumpkin been. head on the ground and then it explodes into the gas and everybody succumbs to the fear gas. Okay. So it's it's kind of like the end of Batman Begins where everybody's under the fear Fucking gas. Except it's, it's, it's in a university auditorium. So again, remember what I said about like this kind of a lower budget in terms of the action yeah. sequences? Yeah. There hasn't been any big sprawling. Yeah. There's no big chase scenes through the streets of Gotham type of stuff. Right, right, right. So Robin says, Batman, he's here. Uh, and Batman says, I'm about three minutes out in the Batmobile. Robin says, move it, Grayson. You can do this. So Robin has right. to face Scarecrow alone. Uh, and he, there's a big fight between the two of them. Um, and Scarecrow has a line where he's like, birds are supposed to be afraid of Scarecrow. And he, he, it's basically Scarecrow with a scythe versus Robin on the other okay. face. So that's pretty fucking cool. Uh, and he grabs Francine and says, you're last on my list. She resists and pushes him in the face. Scarecrow pulls a loose stitch out of his face. regards it. Uh, then grins. A loud crash draws Scarecrow's attention towards the rafters, because guess who he just tried to kill? Francine Langstrom. And guess who's there to protect her? Man Bat swoops towards the stage through the water and the birds, claws outstretched, teeth gnashing. Uh, and now it's Scarecrow versus Man Bat in front of everybody. Uh, and Batman's like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what tarnation? What in tarnation? <laughs> Turns into Foghorn Leghorn. <laughs> Francine yells Kirk when she sees Man Bat, and Scarecrow's like, Kirk? My old friend, I've heard of getting into your work, but it seems you let your work get into you. So Scarecrow's now figured out Man-Bat is Kirk Langstrom. And Man-Bat says, let her go. This is between you and me. Scarecrow says, no, she is between you and me. Okay, so Scarecrow's kind of doing the punny thing. But he's like, <laughs> unlike Mr. Freeze, it, he's like doing it while also like slicing people's throats open and stuff. So That's like, true, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, this would have been yeah. a stark fucking transition. Yeah. yeah. So, more than Batman Begins was. Yeah, so he, he takes Francine hostage. Uh, and Boar, he he has a horse outside. So Scarecrow was on a horse, if this sounds familiar, if anybody saw the ending of Batman Begins. He goes on yeah. a horse with Francine, taking her hostage, as uh, he, Man Bat gets taken out by um, the, uh, basically Scarecrow sends a grid, this is a lighting grid, uh, crashes down on Man Bat, pinning him to the stage and knocking him unconscious. Okay. So that's how he was able to get away. Uh, Batman sees that Crane's going off on the horse and says, I found Crane, Robin. Robin, respond. And Robin is back at the university trying to help Man-Bat. Uh, and Man-Bat is just obsessed with trying to find Crane, especially now that Crane has, has Francine. And Robin tries to tell him from experience, killing Crane won't help anything. It won't make the rage or the pain go away. If you go through with it, you'll truly become an animal. And Man-Bat's just like, take a good look. Crane took my wife and everything. I'll be the monster for both of us. And one person there looks at Man-Bat and calls him Batman... And Man Bat turns around, and they're like, "What are you?" And he says, "I'm Man Bat," <laughs> and he flies him out. <laughs> it's, I mean, we don't really need that, but whatever, <laughs> whatever. Uh, here's where I started playing the Danny Elfman music on my on Spotify on my phone, specifically okay. the music from the Batmobile going through the forest because oh. what we have, what was that called again? Descent into Mystery. Descent into Mystery. Yes, we yes, have yes. a Batman. Uh, driving the Batmobile, chasing after Crane on a horse, going through the through the forest. How fast is this Bart. horse? Well, here's the thing. 
Scarecrow is going into a field. He's going off-roading. Uh, the Batmobile is not the tumbler in this version, so he's not yeah, really equipped for that. This is so, good. This is good, yeah. So he's trying to get to them, but it, it's all bumpy roads and everything, and Scarecrow uh, send, basically creates this fog uh, that happens. He either creates it or there's already a fog there, but uh, Batman's not able to get through. Uh, he de- tries to deactivate the night vision, but he ends up uh, crashing. Uh, rams right into a tree out of commission. And Scarecrow says, I guess he can... Well, he has a pun about not seeing the tree from the forest, but he also he says, nature one, technology zero. Okay. So Batman has to go without the Batmobile from here on out as Scarecrow keeps going off. That's pretty cool. cool. Yeah. 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 Meanwhile, Man-Bat is flying towards them, trying to find them. Um, <clears throat> and uh, Batman's like, I need immediate transportation. And he hears a voice say, need a lift? And it's Robin. And Robin is in his own roadster called the Roadrunner. Not too crazy about this Dex Machina right here, but like Robin has his own yeah. vehicle. You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, he's had it before. I mean, he's had it in fucking two other movies. He hasn't had his own car. It's like a car. It's not a Robin has motorcycle. a car. He doesn't have a motorcycle. Yeah, a, mo- a car that can go through the woods better than the Batmobile. Uh, apparently so. <laughs> Man, you know what I would have done? <laughs> I would have brought back the glider. I would have had fucking Bat- yeah. Batman jump out of the fucking. I know it's like crazy, but jump out of the fucking Batmobile somehow with, like, a booster jump or something. I don't know. And you know who's flying beside him? Man-Bat. Man-Bat, which <laughs> Man would have been fucking nuts. <laughs> yes, that's, Batman, that's true. Batman flying but he's after other. Crane, though, at this point. They're both going after Crane, though. So yeah. he's sense, sort yeah. of safe in that in that way. And just to have the guy on the horse yeah. and then Batman above the trees, yeah, gliding yeah. above the trees. That would have been fucking would have been cool, kind of yeah. cool imagery. Yeah. So they go after the barn, and that's where Scarecrow takes, you know, Francine. And uh, he basically talks about, I'm reading through, but I'm pretty much same old fear stuff. Gets to a point where I'm just like, okay, Scarecrow, we get it. A lot of fear talk there, <laughs> Scarecrow. Yes. Uh, and But uh, Man Bat shows up, and of course there's more uh, fighting on it. Uh, Scarecrow says, I still owe you one, my friend, but maybe I can just take it out in the trade. Uh, indicating Francine. Man-Bat lunges, but Scarecrow waves the torch in front of Man-Bat, trying to keep him at bay with a fire. She okay. will die if you don't stay back, and that would be such a waste. I have so many plans for her, says Scarecrow. Uh, Batman and Robin proceed on foot and head towards uh, the farm, but uh, they get hit by Scarecrow's fear gas again. Okay. So Richard sees his parents again. Uh, Alfred uh, saying, you should have left Robin well enough alone. You're responsible for this. And Robin looks down and he sees the dead body of Batman. So oh, it gets sure. the core of it that he's hallucinating the deaths of the Graysons because really his main fear is Bruce dying okay. on him. Another father figure dying on him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Batman shakes him and says, it's just a hallucination. Come on, we got to go in there uh, and, and everything like that. Uh, and uh, they, Batman and Robin go in and they want to help Man Bat save Francine. And Scarecrow's challenging Man Bat to come after him because he kind of sees Man Bat as his creation. Okay. And everything. And uh, and just at the wrong time, the serum that Francine created kicks in, and Man Bat starts slowly turning into Kirk at the okay. wrong time because this, this is uh, when he he's trying to save the love of his life, and he right. needs the power of the, being the Bat. Oh, interesting. And what what starts his deconversion again? I think maybe it's just his fear of losing her. I'm not really sure. Well, remember he did okay. take a serum that she made for him. Oh, okay, all right, yeah. So it could be that he finally has kicked in. Okay. And Scarecrow's like, what appropriate timing. Time for your trial by fire. Whom shall you choose? Me, the defenseless object of your rage and vengeance, or her, the burning love of your life? Are you man enough to decide? And it says, Man Bat rises, and he spreads his wings. And Man Bat says, there's just enough monster left. And he springs towards Scarecrow and just misses him. Instead, he heads for Francine and raises the, raising the fire spread. So obviously, this is him choosing her over his vengeance on Crane. Okay. Yeah. So he rescues Francine, gets out of the fire, and reverts back to Kirk Langstrom. Okay. Uh, at that point, and uh, Francine helps save him. Meanwhile, Batman and Robin are uh, fighting off Scarecrow as well as that patient who was named Jay. Scarecrow has sort of turned him into his, into his own henchman to fight Robin. Okay. Uh, Scarecrow uh, accidentally kills uh, Jay by I think he throws like a pitchfork or a scythe towards Robin and Robin ducks okay. and it hits his henchman so that's the end of that but uh, at the end Batman is trying to help Francine and Man Bat and Robin turns to Scarecrow 
and uh, Robin is trying to help Scarecrow out of this burning barn because the okay. whole fight has happened and they're starting to the barn starting to catch on fire and everything. And uh, Robin says, even though I'd love to see you dead, I think you'd be better served in Arkham. And Scarecrow says, what's the difference? Robin says, what are you afraid of, Doctor? And Scarecrow considers the offer, looks around with dawning realization and sighs. Uh, and he thinks about uh, he thinks about his past and, okay. he, and everything. And he sees his father says, boy, you can't let people like that terrorize you your whole life. You know what you're meant to do uh, and everything. And uh, he also remembers his father continuing that with the rest of the passageways. He says, fear can't rule you. After your mother passed away, I was scared to raise you by myself. But like a man, I faced it and didn't let it best me. You have to do the same. And young Jonathan says, but they hurt me. I want to hurt them back. And his father tells him, don't concern yourself with them. Revenge will only consume you. Let it go, son. Let it go. Mm. So he forgot the rest of his father's lesson. Okay. And here, surrounded by the very place where that happened, Scarecrow remembers uh, the actual lesson, what he was really supposed to get away from that, and that he's been sort of going away from what his father told him all his life. So as he's burning around and everything, he tells Robin the repeat of what his father said. He says, I know what I must do. Mm-hmm. And Robin says, no, but he tries to stop him, but Scarecrow passes his arm through the fire, which spreads up his sleeve. He's examining his burning arm, then smiles at Robin. The flames engulf him. And Scarecrow basically throws himself into the fire and kills himself. Well, shit. Yeah. <laughs> and Robin gets the fuck out of there because he's just like, all right, well, I did my best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> type of thing. Uh, I did says, my best. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Batman says, I'm sorry I left you back there. Robin says, it's about time I took care of myself. Okay. And Batman says, Crane. Uh, I think we've seen the last of him. And Robin says, maybe. But like he said, once fear is eternal. So uh, happy ending. Kirk is back to being a human again. He's with Francine. Francine asks, anxious to fly again. Kirk says, Ant flying's for animals, not men. And Francine says, to me, there was only the man. Kirk says, but it took the monster to make me realize how much I love you. Francine says, I brought you something. And she holds out a hearing aid. And Kirk says, funny thing, I don't need it anymore. Oh, wow. So nice That's little cool. wrap up for this love story between the two of them. Uh, That's cool. That uh, he had to become man bat in order to uh, remember what was important. It's him. mainly about him. I feel like I feel like Batman goes through this arc in the beginning, but then it's, he's kind of mm-hmm. done at that point. Yeah, you know what to I mean? be honest, this movie is basically the man bat movie, <laughs> man bat versus scarecrow, which is pretty cool. But it's just like it's you know it's again so much focus on a Batman villain and not Batman. But yeah, it's like I don't know, yeah. like if if it's if it's good, then whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, I would have, I would like this movie, I guess. Yeah, you know? I, I would have liked it. I just my my issue is that uh, it's just it's more of Man Bat's movie, and it also feels like if Batman and Robin weren't in this, it would still kind of play out the same. It'd still kind of work, yeah. It would still right. work, it yeah. would just be Man Bat versus Scarecrow, and then Man Bat would still choose Francine, yeah, and Scarecrow would be caught in the burning barn and realize you know the father thing and just let himself die. Yeah, like, yeah Batman yeah. and Robin don't really have to do much right in this whole right. thing that's my only issue with the whole script yeah that's um, that's what yeah exactly i was feeling the same way yeah man. uh wayne manor bruce asks are you sure you want to do this dick says someone told me once that i need to find out who dick grayson is apart from robin bruce i'm honored that you felt i could have ever replaced you maybe one day when you were ready to retire but you're right i need to discover my own path and so he leaves and that sort of completes his art um, bruce is like stay out of trouble and dick says you know me and uh batman is back full time now. Okay. Back in the cow and everything. Gordon silhouette appears uh, and across the office as he walks in and he sees a red cellular phone with a bat logo on it on his desk. So I guess this is planning a modernized version of the bat phone. Okay. For him. Yeah. Uh, now the cityscape. Uh, a red Nokia phone. Yes, a red Nokia. Those phone. indestructible ones. It says Batman is uh, his cape flutters in the breeze. Gotham City's protector has returned. A crow flies past Batman and glides down the side of the building around fire escapes and signs to the street below and passes by Tetch's clothing shop. Night. A quaint hole Are in the you wall fucking establishment. Serious? No lights on. Behind the window, a hand pulls down a shade. A light comes on. The silhouette of a small man in a large top hat. Something is just beginning. Fade out. Wow. All right. Fucking. So the idea was that uh, this was going to be part one of a trilogy that God Shapiro damn. and Wise were going to to do. Uh, so this would have been ba- this wouldn't just be Batman five; it would be Batman five, six, and seven. Jesus Christ! Uh, the idea was that Batman six would be Mad Hatter mm-hmm. with potentially Harley Quinn after she wakes up from a coma yeah. after what happened to her, uh, and then Batman seven would wrap it up by 
having, uh, let's see, let me just read. It's by the third film, Dick, who was absent from the second film, would grow from Robin to Nightwing, and he would help Batman defend Gotham from Killer Croc and Clayface. Jeez. And that's would have that would have wrapped up the trilogy. That'd be awesome. I would have loved to have, like. I kind of wish they did just said fuck it, let's do fan fiction and write the other two just to yeah. see what they had in mind. Yeah, because yeah. like it is a good script. Yeah, if it were made, I, the same issues would apply. It's still kind of the more the villains movie, like yeah. Batman eighty nine yeah. and Batman Returns, but like it still has a lot to like about it. It's more character driven. It feels more low budget, low scale, and uh, it has definitely the best version of Scarecrow in ter- script wise. I mean, if this just had more of a Batman arc to it, mm. uh. It would be a perfect, like you know, horror Batman story. Yeah, you know, it would be the bat, the Batman movie you put on at Halloween. Yeah, no, totally. I would love you a know? Halloween Batman movie. Yeah, a, ho- a holiday movie like Die Hard is a Christmas movie in some and way. Batman Dark Knight would be the Halloween Batman movie. Yeah, exactly. So exactly. Uh, I have a bit of. I wrote down some of the actors I had in mind. For the Shapiro oh, yeah, Wise, I was wondering. Idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, obviously Clooney would be back as Batman. He's definitely who I pictured when reading it. I can really picture Keaton or Kilmer. Yeah. Uh, O'Donnell's back as Robin, uh, and by the time he's Nightwing, he'll be seventy. Uh, Michael <laughs> Goff would be Alfred. <laughs> Fat Hango is Gordon, and then of course Rene Abadjonois. I'm probably butchering his name. Would be Doctor Burton. He was the guy who played Burton in Batman Forever. But more importantly, for our purposes was the narrator of the Batman Forever novelization. Oh audiobook. yes, yes. So for Scarecrow, I can't, I can't see Nicolas Cage play this version of Scarecrow. It's just not. I can see Scare. I can play. I can see him play a version of Scarecrow, but this yeah. one is very much rooted in the comics, rooted in being seen as like an Ichabod Crane type. I'd like to. I think maybe some prosthetics or some makeup would be uh, needed for whoever you cast in that, yeah. just to make him look a little bit more ugly and stuff. But the type of character but the type of character actor that I could see in it would be someone similar to like a Ray Fiennes type, you know, yeah. it was just after English patient and he kind of played this type of character in red dragon. I uh, yeah, right, play a right, good right. villain uh, and everything. So I can right. see Fiennes as that. Um, I considered maybe Jeff Goldblum as man Pat because <laughs> well, Goldblum would fit that better than Scarecrow, but it seems like typecasting because of the fly. That's true. That's true. But that, that, uh, well, yeah, it was like 10, 10 years or so. Yeah. 15 years since then. Um, maybe it's because I like Doom Patrol, but part of me was wondering if you could plug in, since this was the 90s, uh, Brendan Fla- Fraser in that role. I can kind of see him in that, because he's supposed to be the heroic. He's kind of the heroic doctor Actually, type. Actually, yeah, I could totally see and, him as a band. Yeah, band. And, I could, yeah. and Fraser's already, you can see him down for like, oh yeah, sure, I'll be in like the prosthetic. I can see him being the guy who'd be like, I'll, I'm down for the prosthetic. Is any actor already that skinny? Or kind of skinny enough. You're talking about uh, at that Scarecrow time? or Lee yeah Storm? for Scare- Scarecrow. I don't really think so. I mean, one Christian one... Bale and the Machinist. What if that was the <laughs> alternate, alternate reality? <laughs> we see Christian Bale as the Scarecrow. I mean, fuck. There's one actor I probably like, could do it. There's one sort of lesser known actor I really like who was in Man of Steel as a Kryptonian. Who, but I like him for Scarecrow. His name is Julian Richings. If you look up his image, he looks like an Ichabod Crane. He looks like a Scarecrow. Okay. Type. He's just not super well known. I was kind of going for somebody who. Would have probably been cast as a headliner at that time. Okay, uh, and then I'm picturing more of a Jennifer Connelly type as Francine because she always plays the like worried wife type of a scientist <laughs> of a scientist. Yes, yeah, yeah. This, so maybe it's typecasting on my part, but whatever. She's the wife of uh, Charles Darwin in a movie with oh, really what's his her actual husband um, Vision. Oh yeah, I didn't. I forgot about um, that. Yeah, Paul Bettany is yeah. Okay, so maybe that's total typecasting on my part, but whatever. Jennifer Connelly as Francine yeah. Langstrom. You need a you need a solid female lead for this one because Francine Langstrom is the only female in this whole. Thing. That's true. Uh, Batman Six would have been Mad Hatter and Harley Quinn, so I have a very nineties idea of that. I, I'm thinking more of like people who are actually. I know this is Courtney Love or Madonna, but I'm like I'm thinking of people who are actually were like actors primarily. Right. Um, someone who kind of has who could pass as Jack Nicholson's daughter if they were going to go for that. I know that was a Mark Portosovic idea, but I'm carrying that over. Uh, I wrote Cameron Diaz. I can mm, see as yeah. totally as Jack Nicholson's daughter. Yeah, as a Harley yeah. Quinn type. Yeah, uh, and then for Mad Hatter, um, this is mainly because after seeing him play creepy as fuck on Law and Order SVU, uh, Martin Short. He was so creepy in that. Actually, yeah, that's a very good pick, man. Yeah. I would. I was not thinking that, but I. I actually had nobody in mind, but yeah, that's that's really yeah. good. He literally played Martin. Uh, uh, sorry, Mad Hatter and Alice in Wonderland around that time too. So he could have just 
That's <laughs> kept true. The cost. That's true. It would have been kind of the same thing. Uh, Batman Seven, <laughs> Killer Croc and Clayface. So uh, here we go. So this is what probably I'm thinking 2003, 2004. Yeah. Killer Croc is. Um, I think he's supposed to actually be African American. Is uh, he? But it is tough to see. I mean, they did cast an African American in Suicide Squad. Uh, this is maybe I'm thinking Green Mile or something around this time, but I was thinking Michael Clark Duncan. Yeah, I know it's kind of cliche, but I mean he loved those types of roles, so there was that. Yeah, Clayface. I went a little untraditional, given that this I was picturing if you really were casting this 2003, 2004, you would need somebody big and established, uh, almost veteran like in the role of Clayface that would primarily be a vocal role. Yeah, especially if they're going up against Clooney. So you've had Nicholson, DeVito. Jim Carrey, Tom Lee Jones, Schwarzenegger, you need, like, so you can't just cast, like, any, you can't just cast somebody who's just, you know, voice acting in uh, video games and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so I went with the old Basil Carlo version of Clayface, who was, like, the old thing, and some, uh, so I went with uh, Pacino as Clayface, potentially. <laughs> okay. uh, this is, remember, this is before Geely and Jake and Jack and Jill and where he started doing crap comedies. This is right around the time yeah. he was doing Insomnia yeah, and The yeah, Recruit yeah. and stuff like that. So like this was around the time when he was old enough to play these middle aged roles, but he was like also big enough to presumably have been cast as a villain in a comic book role. He does love comic book stuff. He said he was a big fan of Guardians of the Galaxy and he wanted to oh, talk shit. to Marvel oh, about shit. stuff. So he probably would have been down and I could see him play, you know, aging actor as Basil Carlo in this and because you need yeah. him to face off against Clooney in and it's Batman seven. You can't end this with just anybody. Right, so right, right. he's my choice for that particular version. I don't know what the version they would have gone with, but I'm just saying if you're going to wrap up the entire Batman franchise with Clayface, you might as well go with someone big as Clayface. In, in, in the animated one, he's already like good looking, but out of vanity, he wants to be even more so. And that, uh, I think that's he, what fucks I think he's up. disfigured from an accident or something, and yeah. so he does that. Like in the in the original version of Clayface, he was just an aging actor okay. who uh, wanted revenge on the people who were doing the remake of it. Okay. So I'm kind of going for like a similar version of that. Okay, I got you. So that would have been the possible ways that we could have continued the the '90s Batman in another universe. In another universe, in Batman the multiverse. unchanged. I w- I'd love to do a deep dive in Batman Unchained, but unfortunately I don't have the script, and then I kind of just went over the summary of Batman Dark Knight. I'm, if that guy has a Twitter or a contact, I'm going to email him this episode. Of course, yeah, by the way. actually do that. Um, yeah. The writers of this did say that they noticed a lot of similarities between this version of Scarecrow and Batman Begins, where there was the Arkham Asylum. There's a couple uh, lines things, lifted, right? A couple lines that feel like it's lifted. There's even one where straight out Francine says, Jonathan, yeah. and Scarecrow turns and he says, no. Scarecrow. Okay, yeah. Which is in Batman Begins. Yeah. So, I don't know. Maybe Does he say, not my diagnosis? <laughs> Remember that in uh, Dark Knight? Dark, yeah, no, that's not in here. <laughs> I thought that was kind of a minus. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's They did weird stuff with Scarecrow. He's kind of just this... He, was, he went from, like, the red herring villain almost yeah. for Batman Begins to kind of just being hey now I'm the cameo villain for yeah, exactly. Dark Knight Dark Knight Rises I'll just yeah. show up and everything yeah so. it was. I think that, that was kind of weak I think Nolan was to me it felt like too obvious of a mistake for Nolan to make yeah but oh well you know like but Nolan Nolan's is like usually so good with that shit I would have loved the uh, I would have loved a Tim Burton style Scarecrow type thing like this yeah, like yeah, Dark Knight. They're definitely. He would have he would knocked us out of the park, yeah. man. Would have so, been amazing. Would have absolutely been hit it out of the park. So, that is Batman Dark Knight. That's our that's my replacement deep dive for Batman Robins. And who are the game. writers of this one again? Again, it is uh, Lee Shapiro and Stephen Wise. Great. So, thank you for thank you guys for allowing that to be published so that I could read it and uh, talk about it on the podcast. Awesome, bro. This was actually the sequel to our Batman and Robin episode. If you didn't listen to that, please check that out. Uh, this is this was what could have been as far as a sequel to, or, I guess, reboot of Batman kind and of Robin, a, actually. A, 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 believe a it loose or not. reboot, but yeah, yeah. it would have been interesting to see Clooney as a dark version of Bat- this Batman while retaining the whole like fact that he's still the smartest guy in the room, still the detective and everything. It just... It would have it, it would have been a weird redemption round for Clooney while still not quite being it wouldn't have fully cemented him as like a great Batman 
Okay. Because of the fact that it, it just doesn't give him that much more. Okay. So that's my opinion on how it could have turned out. Is that pretty much it, dude? That's pretty much it. Batman 5. Batman 5. All right. Catch us. Do you want to reveal the next one or do you want to save that? Uh, well, we, uh, as you guys might imagine, the next live action movie is Batman Begins, but we might take a little bit of detour because there was another movie released around the same time. We're still going in chronological order, y'all. Yeah, we kind of are. Uh, there's another movie released after Batman and Robin that people saw, and every Batman, hardcore Batman fan saw it and believe, why didn't they just do this as Batman and Robin instead? That is Batman, Mr. Freeze, Sub-Zero, everybody. We are going to dive <laughs> into that. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> stay tuned to find out what we think, because I have not seen that since 1998, and Andrew has I not have never seen it. I have never seen it, just like a phantasm. So <laughs> we'll see uh, how that turns out. Yeah, we'll see. I do not have the Blu-ray for that one, actually. All That's right, everybody, this has been another installment, of course, and uh, yeah, Check us out on all the social media, and please give us some money on Patreon. <laughs> Search for Superhouse Podcast on there. And I'm, uh, what's my name? Thunderwolf Drew <laughs> on Instagram and Twitter. And uh, Ben is? I'm Ben Juan Ryder on Instagram. And uh, both of us help out with the uh, Superhouse Podcast uh, Instagram account, which is Superhouse Pod, uh, just, just P-O-D, on there. And we get to show you guys pictures of things that uh, you don't usually get to see on the, uh, on the podcast. The deep dive continues. All right, that's it, everybody. Andrew signing off. Ben signing off. <laughs>